Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Indeed, it was Lenin who said that there are some decades when nothing happens and there are weeks in which decades happen, and it feels like this week is one of those weeks. And this war, as we know, is, is pernicious, it's wrong, and this government straining every sinew to ensure that it is not successful. Indeed, the whole House is united on this front. These sanctions, and I don't think this has been you know, fully uh, recognised by all quarters of the House, these sanctions are the most extensive that have ever been put in place by any government at any time. Think back to the days of apartheid South Africa. Think back to all sorts of regimes we've seen over the recent decades. Never has a government acted this extensively, indeed this swiftly, and for that the government should be commended. A, a couple of questions on the financial sanctions from the, from the Treasury bench. The first is, what is the position of individuals or institutions who may be assisting those trying to evade these sanctions, maybe right now or indeed after these have come into force? And for the avoidance of doubt, could he clarify that it remains legal for UK entities or individuals to hold equities or debt instruments in businesses headquartered in Russia that were already held before this crisis started. And I think it's important to get that clarification on the record. In relation to the export sanctions, what safeguards are there? We, now, the government is trying to prohibit the export of certain materiel to Russia that will be helping in the war effort against Ukraine that we all condemn and we all deplore. What safeguards are there for exports to third countries that are then smuggled to Russia in the, uh, in the legislation? Because, of course, that is a very obvious route that many uh, nefarious individuals may take. And if the minister would also enlighten the House on what other types of equipment might be considered for inclusion within this export ban that are currently not included, what sorts of things is the government also looking at? These sanctions represent the right way forward. We are isolating Putin. We are squeezing the Russian economy in concert with our allies. And it's worth noting, agreeing with the words of my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, where he says, you know, we are not taking military action directly. We are not doing that. The right way for a country like the United Kingdom and indeed the world is not to try and escalate the military conflict, but to squeeze Putin, his government, and the Russian economy. And if I may finish on a word about the City of London, there's been some discussion from, on both sides of the House, uh, former chairs of the Public Accounts Committee, of which I'm a very proud former member, uh, about the City of London, dirty money, cleaning it up. Uh, I speak as somebody, probably Karen Interest, who was a corporate lawyer and a banker in the City of London. Um, and the you know, City of London does many, many brilliant things, uh, but also, I think we all recognise, now needs to step up and help this House, help the government show that might is not always right, and morals and money are not always mutually exclusive. And with that, I strongly support the imposition of these sanctions.